Hello, Joel, Revelation, what's going on? We are in chapter 11, although chapters in this sense aren't actually that necessarily helpful. Um, I've been brushing up on the knowledge. Michael Wilcott points out the fact that actually Revelation probably isn't very best read in chapters, but in more in the actual themes of different scenarios that are going on and are unfolding in, in the text is it was not written in chapters it was not written in uh, the the referencing that the Bible was written in or it was presented to us in is not how it was written we know that in the most simplest way that perhaps is when we've got a letter and we see that obviously that's been written for an audience it wouldn't have been written in chapter 1 chapter 2 rah, rah, rah. so when we're looking at Revelation Michael Wilcott points out that there's eight scenes that we need to kind of be thinking, okay, there's there's a scene. It's like, when that scene comes to an end, you go, cool, scene over, new scene. And it's all because the the messenger that greets John is like, right, write down what you see. And I don't know if you've ever had a dream where it's like, you're, you're desperately trying to recall the dream after it's happened. John is in the dream and he's like, okay, what are the key things I need to remember about what is happening in front of me? This bizarre, out of my body experience that's happening. Well, how do I condense this into language? I don't know. I'm amazed that he's, he's done as well as he has. But I, I often think about John. If this is the same John that had his head resting on the heart, chest of Jesus, close to his heart, I do wonder about, is there something there about cultivating such an intimacy with Jesus that he would trust us to to be kind of thrown out into the deep end of the paranormal of the the end times gravity of all right here's where we're all going John do you remember when you were close to me in person and and it was it was all very simple it was just about resting your head on my on my heart well it is still that simple and we need to understand that when we're reading Revelation, when we're seeing all this imagery, and we can get caught up in it, we can get distracted by it even, and try and work out, oh, what does that mean, what does that mean, what does that mean? We've got a very simple message, guys. And we've got all our lives to understand just the intricacy of what's going on in, in Revelation and the proposed narratives of this being for a time to come, this is the time that we're in, this is for the people that have already been. There's so many different speculations, but ultimately I, I, I think I want to serve us by saying this can be condensed into a, a simple, as we're trying to remember a dream, what are the main things that stick out? The main things that stick out is that God is glorious, that there will be judgment, that the righteous will reign. And then you ask yourself, how can I stand in the day of the Lord? How can I stand? We can only stand because of Jesus, right? We can only stand because of him. And there's such provocative imagery here. And we're told that it's, it's blessed to hear Revelation. It's blessed for us to be to be listening to it. And I think it's because it just it does the job of, of making the extremes even more extreme. It, it makes it so black and white that sin is bad, that God is good, and that God is right, that sin is wrong. And that ultimately we're in need, guys. We're in need of a saviour. We're in need of Jesus to have done all that he has done in order for us to stand and to even come to that place of comfort uh, at the end of all things when we're called up and giving an account for our life. Even the blood of the Lamb covers us and we're cleaning that or we're not. So it makes it simple for us. It goes, look, this is this is the this is the extreme of what's going on. Where do you stand? I stand in Christ. I stand alone in Christ Jesus. I can't stand any other way. I fall down. I, I'm face to the dirt Christianity because I can't I can't improve myself. I'm in need of Christ to continually cover me. That's the simplicity of, of when, I'm when I'm wrestling with aspects of the scripture and 
with chapters to come, I will uh, draw out verses that, that feed us. But I wanted to start there with just with such with such uh, imagery going on. It's important for us to just remember what what are the fundamentals of what what we need to know out of this is that it's painting a picture that we can't get our heads around as, as we are right now. We need him to give us insight. We need him to give us revelation. We need him to give us revelation, instruction. And we've got our instruction. It's to go out and make disciples of all the world, of the nations. So ultimately, if you're reading this, you're thinking, man, I don't want my friends to face that day alone. I want them to stand in Christ as well. So we must be desperate to to hear this message and think, wow, heart check, am I safe? Who else is there? And go out and, and bring them in. Tell them the good news that they don't need to fear anything because Christ has come. And whatever judgment there is, they can accept that Christ has taken that already. So I'll leave us with that. I'll see you again.